Welcome back. For the last week, infectious disease doctors have been stepping forward to provide answers about the Omicron variant. And the questions keep coming in. So tonight, Dr. Alex Wong joins us from Regina and Dr. Zane Chagla is in Mississauga. And uh, thanks to, to both of you for joining us. Dr. Wong, we've seen a lot of reports on what's been going on in Ontario and Quebec. Give us the perspective from Saskatchewan. Thanks, Ian. So uh, the case numbers right now in Saskatchewan are still quite low. Uh, you know, testing rates are not super high at this point. So it's a little bit scary kind of watching what's happening in Ontario and Quebec and realizing that that's going to be us probably in a matter of days, maybe a week, week and a half tops. Uh, we know that Omicron is transmitting, uh, you know, in the community at this point. And I think we're the only province, as far as I know, that doesn't have indoor gathering restrictions and capacity limits. So I, I would really love to be able to see our policymakers take some proactive action this time. Uh, and, and help get us ahead of this uh, before it really starts to get out of hand. But uh, we're watching, obviously, Ontario and Quebec very closely and uh, thoughts and prayers for our colleagues there and our healthcare worker colleagues there. Dr. Chagla, I'm hearing from so many people on a personal level who are talking about how frustrated, how tired, even angry they feel about uh, this latest twist in the pandemic. What are you seeing from, from your patients and their families in Hamilton? Yeah, I mean, you know, number one, access to testing is tough. And people that are trying to do the right thing and get tested aren't able to access it and, and uh, you know, often relying on rapid tests and, and still being unsure. Number two, you know, I, I think people are realizing now, you know, throughout the pandemic, many people didn't know anyone that tested positive for COVID and are rapidly finding out lots of their friends and family have tested positive. Uh, and so many more people being careful, watching their contacts. Uh, but uh, but unfortunately, you know, people testing positive and, and us trying to reach them very quickly to offer them therapeutics and, and get them better. Let's go to a couple of viewer questions. Uh, first of all, this from Emily. I was wondering um, how long after exposure would a positive result show on a rapid test? So if I took a test and I showed up negative, does that mean that I'm not contagious in that moment? Even if I was to test positive a couple days later. So, Dr. Wong, that is a very specific hypothetical question. Um, why don't you give us an answer to that? Sure. I'll do my best. So, Emily, uh, first of all, it goes without saying that if you have been exposed to someone who is COVID positive, that you need to isolate, uh, you know, and protect yourself, protect other people. Uh, from there, it gets a little bit more tricky because the viral loads for Omicron, we know, tend to go up pretty quickly. Um, and so, you know, it's hard to know with certainty exactly when you become, uh, you know, someone that's potentially contagious and when your viral loads are high enough to be contagious. Uh, you know, if you haven't been exposed and you're just using rapid tests, for example, to try to keep gathering safe and so forth, it's very important for everybody to try to do your rapid test as close to the gathering as you possibly can. Because the viral loads change so quickly, uh, a negative test in the morning may not necessarily mean that you're still negative in the evening. So test as close as you can to the event. Uh, another viewer question. This is uh, from M uh, Kimberly. My question concerns those of us who are grandparents who babysit young children. We have a two-year-old granddaughter. We have pretty close contact with her, lots of hugs and kisses and games. And we're wondering, is there anything else that we should be doing to help keep her safe and ourselves safe as well? Dr. Chagla? Yeah, I mean, this, this whole pandemic has been tough on grandparents, right? And, and they're missing out on a part of their life that's so important. Uh, number one, you know, if you, you haven't gotten your booster, consider getting your booster because that's going to give you as much individual protection as you can. Number two, you know, there, there, there are differences here for, you know, for example, a grandchild that's in daycare as compared to a grandchild that really stays at home uh, and the number of contacts that they have. And so when you have more and more contacts, especially as more and more of the world is getting COVID, you know, that, that creates a riskier situation where you may want to bundle controls like masking or doing the, the play activities outside uh, or, uh, or using rapid tests uh, on the child and yourself. Uh, so, you know, it really is dependent on the situation. People do need to be careful now as, as there is an increased risk of exposure. And again, keeping contact small, getting immunized are, are probably the biggest things that we can offer. Literally have 30 seconds from each of you on this last question. We've all been contemplating at least making changes in our life now with Omicron looming. Uh, Dr. Wong, first to you, have you done that? 
Yeah, so, you know, schools are closed now here in Saskatchewan, but we are going to keep our kids home from daycare over the next couple of weeks to try to limit uh, contacts and exposures. Uh, you know, we're going to keep our bubble super, super tight just to immediate family, a lot of rapid testing. Everybody's fully vaccinated, and hopefully that'll carry us through the holiday season. Dr. Chagla? Yeah, I mean, very similar to Alex. The only thing I would add is, uh, you know, we're probably going to be treating many patients as if they have COVID as they come in the hospital as, as again, the situation is just so unstable in our community and, and so many people have it that uh, it's going to be difficult to sort out who does or doesn't right off the bat. Well, your patients need you more than ever over the next few weeks. So uh, I wish you both well and thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Ian. Thanks.